did we do with Rivian, the electric vehicle maker, at a time when Wall Street, and more important, maybe the consumer, seems to have fallen out of love with their whole product category? It's not just Tesla stock that's been getting killed. I think Rivian, the smaller EV alpha that's most likely to become the bankable, viable one, is terrific. But its stock is still down 35% year to date. Didn't help that the company reported mixed fourth quarter production and deliveries results at the beginning of the month. So the question is, do you treat this weakness as a buying opportunity and a high quality operator? Or is it time to write off the whole electric vehicle cohort? For now, we can only try to stay close to the story and a vehicle that does still turn a lot of heads when it's on the road. Earlier today, we got a chance to check under the hood of Rivian Automotive, joining CEO R.J. Scaringe at his very cool showroom in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, for a chat. Take a look. R.J., what are we doing here in Williamsburg in what we call a space? Well, I'm excited to have you here. This is, uh, is our Brooklyn space, and we're sitting here next to Rivian R1S. And uh, really excited to tell you a bit more about Rivian. Well, please do, because... Uh, I think you are the other company, frankly, that's going to make it. No need to emphasize the first car because that, that, that man sells himself. But tell me why you, are, you think that you can have success in this area. Yeah, so the, what we're seeing next to you, this is the, our set of our first launch products, the R1 platform. We have an R1T, a truck, and an R1S, which is the SUV. And that really serves as the flagship for the brand. It, it initiates the world to, to what we're doing, why we're building our products and our brand and our company. Um, and we also have a commercial side of the business where we build commercial vans with the first uh, customer for us being Amazon. Now, uh, when you say build, you actually mean in scale. We have seen other outfits that we've come to uh, know, but they turn out to be boutique. They don't yeah. really make a lot of product. Yeah. You have already made a lot of product. Yeah, the, uh, our flagship products, the R1T and the R1S, they were the best selling vehicles of the last two quarters, over $70,000 in the United States. Now, so uh, you're starting to see a lot of them on the road. It's super exciting. My kids love it. Every time they see them, they point it out. And now it's every time we drive somewhere, we're pointing out a lot of cars. Which well, is, I, I, have, I actually brought my wife Lisa to this shoot because she finally found something that might be interesting enough that I do after 19 I love years that. of this program. I love that. Yeah. Now, uh, people tell me, I mean, this is what stands out. How did you come up with this? I know this is a little bit too wonderment, not enough numbers. Yeah. But I just think it's so distinctive, and I know you're an engineer. How did you know this would be the right look? I mean, as a new company, a new brand, uh, we, had, we didn't have a heritage from an aesthetic point of view or design point of view. So it afforded us an amazing opportunity to, to sort of say, what does a Rivian look like? And so we had hundreds of different front ends and designs we went through. We ultimately landed on something that was very clean. We wanted it to feel strong. But importantly, we wanted it to have a sense of invitation and friendliness to it. And so... The, the, you know, the stadium-shaped headlight with this crossbar was um, probably iteration 160 or something. It was a lot of, a lot of different versions we went through. All right, so at, at the space, uh, do you see people, or would you expect that people will be kind of gawking because it's so cool looking? Well, when you're, one of the really wonderful things about the design is the vehicle you can see from very far away. So if I'm, you know, if I'm looking down 10 blocks away and you see a car coming towards you, you can immediately tell if it's a Rivian. So that's been really helpful for us as a new brand. People immediately I, you can connect with and identify what our cars are. But I, I certainly have to go over uh, something you said that is so important that first attracted me to you, which is that you do have a very tight relationship with Amazon. How yep. did that come about? Yeah, so Amazon's one of our largest shareholders, and um, they're both an investor, but they're also a very close partner. And in addition to the consumer side of the business, we wanted to build a set of products on the commercial side that helped accelerate how rapidly large fleets were moving to electric vehicles. And um, the, the largest opportunity that exists out there uh, is Amazon's fleet. And so we had approached Amazon to have sort of broad discussions and it led to ultimately them investing and, and what we now see. Uh, funny as we're saying this in Amazon vehicles uh, sitting out in front of I here. know, that's so, happenstance, you did yeah, not plan that It's just vehicle. so funny, but so we now have over 10,000 Amazon deliver vans that we built that are fully EV and uh, the drivers love them. They've got all a much better set of creature comforts in terms of usability. But my understanding is uh, that Amazon would take every one you could make, but you still in that last quarter said, we now have the right to be able to sell to other companies. Why do that? Amazon's the best client in the world. Well, we will continue to sell to Amazon, uh, but we want to make sure we have lots of other fleets to yeah. diversify beyond just, just their fleet now. Uh, the benefit of having worked so closely with Amazon in developing this is it wasn't as if they sent us requirements we built a vehicle. We worked really collaboratively to understand 
how do drivers in a delivery space or in a commercial setting use the vehicle? So things like getting in and out, the seat comfort, the driver positioning, visibility, lots of iteration uh, working closely with them. Right. Now, the other day, Elon Musk, I will mention his name, uh, talked about how it's now about affordability, that people mm -hmm. can't afford uh, electric vehicles because rates have gone up, yep. prices are too high. How are you uh, dealing with the notion of your price point yep. and how people can afford it? Uh, and particularly also talk about leasing. Yeah, so uh, again, with these as our flagship products, they, they've been designed to operate at a, at a higher price point. Uh, but really with the goal of, as I said, building the brand. Our next set of products, uh, what we call creatively R2, which is the follow-on to R1, uh, they'll be smaller in terms of form factor, but also much lower price point, but carry the essence of the brand we've created with R1. Um, now what we're also seeing, which is important on these, is the level of penetration across multiple different segments. So we have customers that are coming out of minivans, coming out of pickups coming out of SUVs, coming out of premium sedans uh, that are really attracted to the brand that we've put together and in the, in the product proposition we put together with R1. Now, uh, there are certain resistance that we've noted. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine from uh, the days when I used to be on Wall Street, uh, Steve Schur, the CEO of Hertz, okay. has talked about how we, uh, that he has too many Teslas, that they're yep. not really working, not that functional. There, people are worried about range anxiety. Yeah, yeah. People are worried about not enough charging yeah, stations. Yeah. How, about, how do you rebut these presumptions? Well, look, it's, um, this represents, in terms of transportation, this is one of the biggest transitions that the auto industry has ever seen. So moving from combustion powered vehicles to electric, and there's a lot of aspects that that, that brings with it. New supply chains, new infrastructure around charging, uh, new consumer understanding and behaviors. And charging is absolutely a major focus for us. And as a result, we've, we've, we're building a charging network, a DC fast charge network. Fast uh, charge being how long for uh, something like this? So you like can this? charge something like this, uh, 25 minutes, you can do an, like an 80% fill up. Okay. Uh, but we've also partnered with Tesla to access their network. Right. Um, but we think this is a really key enabler over the next few years to continue investing in charging infrastructure so that customers have peace of mind to be able to drive from, let's say, New York to a DC. Okay, now we know uh, you're in a period where you can't necessarily talk about numbers other than the numbers that have already been described, yeah. but there are some who feel that uh, initially a uh, big burst of interest now that you've made more uh, cars than you can sell, but yeah. I, I, I can't determine that that to be the case. I, yeah. I, I get that you pretty much are selling everything you make. Yeah, I mean, the, there's always speculation around demand versus production. Right. I think for us, we have... Um, because of our commercial vehicle business, there's some idiosyncrasies around the delivery. And uh, an element that I think was lost is the commercial vans, Amazon doesn't take delivery of commercial vans really from the middle of November through the end of the year because they're so focused on their busiest right. time of the year. So we end up building up a little bit, a little bit of in inventory during that period, which then we burned down over the course of the first half of, of the well, fall. Where are, you, well, where are you in terms of the tax credits? With the next iteration, yeah. that would be uh, the nirvana for tax credit. Oh, for sure. I mean, so the R2 program has been designed entirely around achieving the $7,500 tax credit associated with vehicle purchase. These vehicles still qualify for uh, uh, half of that for, you know, for, for tax credits, and then our leased vehicles qualify for all of it. So when you lease a Rivian, and you asked about leasing before, uh, you gain access to a full $7,500 credit, which is one of the reasons the lease terms are so attractive on the vehicle. All right, uh, just one more thing. Uh, there are people who think it's peaked, that EV's peaked, that mm -hmm. there, uh, there's an EV on we, that there yeah. was an initial burst of people who want to do the right thing for the yeah. environment. Yeah. That's done and yeah. sated. What do yeah. you say to those people? Well, I think first we have to really take a step back. In the long term, uh, to me, there's zero debate that all of our vehicles will convert to electric. So it's not a question of if, it's just a question of when. And in parallel to that, we have a whole host of policies that exist across the world that are gonna be driving 100% of new vehicle sales to electric. And in most countries, that's 2035. And in the United States, a number of states, including California, have committed to 2035 as well. So the policies are gonna be driving us to convert to electrification. What we as an industry need to do is to create supply of interesting choices for consumers. And what I think we're witnessing today is a lack of choice. There's not enough vehicles across price points and form factors to give people viable alternatives 
uh, to their combustion vehicles that they've been buying. Well, and also you should say, and not enough great looking ones. Yeah, so they need to be great cars across different price points and across different segments. And that's one of the things that has us so excited about our R2 program. The price point being lower, it fits right into the, the meat of the market. Um, and we look at this, the R1 program, it's the best selling vehicle over $70,000. Well, so. there you go. What I want to do is have it sell itself by getting a, a ride from you. Yeah. How about that? I'd love that. Okay, RJ Scarinch is the founder and CEO of Rivian. Let's go for a ride. Let's do it. Coming up, want to score more? Kramer sits down with a company that's done better than fair next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.